Bum, 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 bum. All right. You guys ready? <clears throat> Ding dong. Greetings, champions. <laughs> Welcome to Mars Guiding Hand. I am Mars, and this is Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, a free-to-play, officially licensed Dungeons & Dragons formation strategy game from Codename Entertainment. On this partner stream, we take a look at the latest content, discuss strategies, and answer any questions that you may have about the game. So wash your hands, champions. We are still practicing safe habits like social distancing during the global crisis. If I fear positivity, and for at least a couple hours, join me on this monumentous occasion as we take a deeper look at all things Idle Champions for the spring extravaganza and the huh, official launch of version 1.0. Congratulations, Codename Entertainment. Uh, congratulations uh, to the entire community for sticking it out this long. It's uh, It's been a long wait, a long ride, but we're finally here, and I'm, I'm so stoked. Uh, so, today is Wednesday, March 25th, 2020, and uh, in this uh, Season 2, Episode 1 of Mars Guiding Hand, uh, we'll be talking about a lot! <laughs> to put it simply, we'll be talking about a lot! <clears throat> so, hi. Uh, today is one heck of a day. We've got a lot going on. By the way, uh, just before I started the stream, I put out the update for the Champions Visual Aid that I manage for the community. So, uh, like, kind of in celebration of version 1.0 launching day, you could type exclamation point cva in the chat for the the bot to give you a link to that okay god were you guys there for the entire c and e stream because i was, it was so cool seeing all these people come in and talk we had oh gosh we had justin we had chris we had dave we had peter we had sean we had dylan and of course we had margaret and that was amazing Ah, <sighs> all of that was so good. Uh, and now we are going to take a look at things specifically. Not so much interview process here as much as we just focus on the game itself. So, let's just dig in. You know what I haven't done yet? I saved it for you guys. Oh, oh, hey. Chess code, there you go. Forgot to turn that on for you. Enjoy that. Get your chess code right here. Ibis Meave Guild. If I was going to join uh, a guild about um, birds, specific kinds of birds, it would definitely be an Ibis Meave guild. No, that's, that's nothing. That's nothing. The thing that I haven't done yet is unlock Strahd, so let's just do that real quick. Strahd von Zarevik was a count, a prince, a soldier, and a conqueror, but that was before he welcomed the darkness of vampirism. Strahd has been the master of Ravenloft for centuries, but he is always in the hunt for someone worthy to rule in his stead so that he can escape his cursed lands. <laughs> it's 10 medium bounty contracts, 20 silver chests, you must have 40 champions all unlocked, and you must have completed the Towering Expectations adventure with no patron. That is uh, one of the final adventures, if not the final adventure, in uh, the Barovia content of the Grand Tour of the Sword Coast campaign. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab Strahd real quick. Boom! Nice. So he uses Barovian coins. That's a very cool influence banner there. I like that. Okay. What are our challenges for Strahd? No healers this week. Uh, 5,000 beasts, 5,000 undead. Okay. Okay. Ultimate's easy. 2,500 fiends, 1,000. Lots of kill quests. Lots of kill quests. But let's look at the shop. The shop is going to show us... Okay, there's a, a Strahd starter pack. Okay, cool. Seems pretty standard. But the Cadbury skin. God, I want this. This might be, in my opinion, one of the best looking skins in the game now. Like, I, I just... I kept looking at this last night. Uh, trying to figure out, like, what colors I'm looking at here. <laughs> I have a bit of a, a, a color vision deficiency. Significant one. So, uh... Uh, I had a hard time telling what's blue and what's purple here, but it's all good. It's all very, very good. I love the red string on the bow. That's extremely cool. Yeah. 
Uh, so we have more time gate piece that we can get now. And of course, a... Where is it? Yeah, there it is. Potion of Polish. Okay, here's a feat for Paulton. Charmed life. 40% increase to his lucky. Ooh, plus one intelligence for Grama. Hey, nice. So that's probably going to be the first thing I grab. Uh, Vistani Regis. Also a cool skin, but I like the Caddy one more. Excess dagger storage. Okay, so here's where we get the, the dagger feat for Hitch. For more daggers that he throws. Excellent. Here's the familiar toy werewolf. Epic feat, full moon. 80% moonbeam for Tyrrell. Trying to incentivize people to uh, not be using barrel anymore, huh? Okay, I see how it is. Let's take a look at the new stuff that they added to Vajra's shop. Conjured Spider. Um, that's it for Vajra. Okay, so already got the rest. And Mert. Probably just, the, yeah, just the Flame Skull. Golden Flame Skull. Very cool. Yes, I am currently streaming a Twitch drop broadcast. Thank you, Idol Champions. <laughs> Is my stream set up for drops? Um, Margaret talked me through that last night, so it should be. Go into the settings. Oh, is my stream set up for shops? Okay. Uh, what do I need to do? Do I need to unlink and link? I'm good? Okay, fantastic. That's what I was hoping for. Thank you. No problems here. Fantastic. That's how I want it to be. Okay. So, uh... I just wanted to get that out of the way really quickly because I, I've been fighting so hard to resist looking at this stuff before my actual show so that you guys could see my reactions live to it. Uh, now that that's out of the way, what I actually want to start with, first of all, is just taking a look at the Spring Extravaganza uh, UI itself. Okay, so this is like the same thing that they did with the anniversary celebration. Uh, so we have like multiple days, pick up your chest. I'll go ahead and claim my chest for today. Ooh, nice. Hey, a time gate piece. Fantastic. Okay, very cool. All right, next one will be... Yeah, just tomorrow, 22 hours, 15 minutes, 30 seconds. And if we get four different days, then you get five gold chests, the much sought after plus one con feat for Celeste. Finally, thank you, CNE. And champion Minsk and Boo. Good. I think. Nice. Claimed it. I think. Uh... Is that the last one we need to have to have a full champion skin team on the field at once? Oh yeah, uh, claim. Claim is up. Get your stuff. Get your free stuff. This is going to take some uh, some adapting for myself as well. Paying attention to the little um, <clears throat> pop-up at the top of the chat in the corner of my eye. You got it, Dave. I will make sure to announce it whenever I notice it. I don't want to leave you guys hanging out to dry here. Get your free stuff. I am psyched about having the ability to actually give you guys stuff. Like, directly in a, a weird way. Well, I guess it's kind of indirectly. But like, via the, the Twitch drops process, that is so cool. Uh, wanting, like, the desire to share my bounty with the community has been there for... A long time. It's not exclamation mark claim. Do not spam that. It's a button that you click in the chat. It should be like appearing in the top of your chat box. It's not a command that you type into the chat. It's not that. Good try, but no. There's supposed to be a button. I was testing it myself uh, when I was over watching the, um, uh, the CNE stream. Nothing else works. I I wish I could I wish I could help with this. This this is all on CNE and, and Twitch. I have no control over this situation. Uh 
Okay. <clears throat> FPS is a little jumpy. Oh no. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry if there's issues. I need a new computer. I believe uh, someone, was it Peter or was it Sean? Someone was saying in the CNE stream that it might take like 15 minutes or something like that for your reward to actually show up after you've claimed it. It was something like that. There, there's some kind of like delay, some waiting period. Uh, this is like a totally new feature, Twist Drops 2.0. So eh, it might be a little rough around the edges. We'll make it work somehow. Turn down the game volume? Yeah, sure. I do not mind that at all. There, 2% instead of 3%. Barely any volume whatsoever. <sighs> okay, so we have a lot to talk about. There is the Spring Extravaganza, Formation Saves, the ultimate balance, champion balance, with Deacon, Ishii, Daddyus, Kron, Hitch, Birdsong, Barrowin, and Strix. Patron Strahd, we've already looked at him. Check. Uh, the Familiars and Skins, which we already looked at as well. And there's new DLC that's been added as well. Shade Artemis and the Iron Pup Familiar. I think they even have the Iron Pup up here. Yeah. On, uh, on the Spring Extravaganza pop-up. Isn't that cute? That's adorable. I remember that being data mined a while ago, but it, it's nice to finally see it in the game. Mm. Speaking of claiming chests, I'm going to go ahead and grab mine. Try to not knock my uh, coffee cup over here. Ibis, Meave, Guild. Okay, fantastic. So right now we're just in a Mad Wizard free play because I was finishing up, trying to finish up my challenges for Mert. This is also my final free play to get my weekly free play cap currency. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset this. And... I would like to start a Strahd variant, since we've unlocked him. Thank you, skip button, for existing. Okay, look at this. 100% on Mirth the Moneylender, 99% on Vajra Safar, 0% on Strahd Von Zarevic. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Whole new fresh batch of challenges for me, thank you very much. Look at all these green dashes. I'm not sure what we'd actually call these. These green pips that indicate unfinished business. Yes, the unfinished business pips. <laughs> and let's go to Barovia. Let's see, what do we have over in Barovia? What might be fun here? Hmm. 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 This seems fitting. <laughs> this seems appropriate. Only champions with an intelligence score of 13 or higher may be used, but watch out! For working for Strahd Von Zarevic, only champions with an intelligence score of 13 or higher can be used. Awesome. Let's do it. Easy. Quest markers. That works. Seth Rogen's brother. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> do I want to grab those? How does this work? Okay! Awesome. Well, I'll be happy to uh, put Birdsong out for this, then. Wait. Can I use her? Yes. Good. Good. Excellent. So this is my, my first attempt at a Strahd Patron variant doing this live. <laughs> yes, when you unlock a, a skin, it will, uh, and you don't own the character, it will typically give you the character as well. But I already have Birdsong. It, it will tell you that you unlock 
the character even if you already have the character, which I do. Okay. Not many options in slot two. Just Regis. Hold, hold up. Sean! <laughs> Sean! <laughs> uh... My slot three is gone, Sean. It's, uh... It's, oh, 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 there's Artemis. Hi, Artemis. Nope, nope, okay. I still have slot three. It's just Birdsong has inserted herself as slot 2.5. I see. Interesting. Can I have two Birdsongs? No, it's just moving her over. Okay. I'm not going to take her specialization yet. I might actually set her up as DPS for this. This might be interesting. Make all those go away. I'll just go ahead and unlock Regis. Yeah, can't use anyone else in slot three. For slot four, I'll take Paulton. Slot five. Ooh, I want to have some fun with the new and improved Daddius. Definitely. Mmm. Mmm. We should at least take a look at Krond. <laughs> Ding dong. Someone in the Discord suggested that I should grab that uh, that sound effect somehow uh, before my stream started so that I could use it during the stream, but that, that two minutes was not enough for me to just hunt that down and plug it in. Would have been very, very fun, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in checking out all the all of the updated characters. We've got Deacon, which can't actually use for Strahd, so we're going to give him a pass for now. Uh, Ishii. Can't use her either, unfortunately. Uh, Daddius we can use. And Krond we can use. Can we use Hitch? That's not you. Yes, Mitch. Excellent. I'll get back to you in a moment. Mitch, Birdsong. Can we use Barrowin? No. Okay, and Strix. Can you Strix? Excellent. Good, good, good. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure yet about specialization, so I'm, I'm going to wait on specializations for a bit. Okay, I might be going tankless. Well, I'll just use Tyrell, it's fine. Let's go ahead and put him in wild shape. This is the one thing that I'm very certain about for specializations right now. These updates, regardless of everything else that's going on, champion balance updates are the most exciting because that's when you can expect the meta to be shifting. We, we have some things to discuss about um, things that are changing, such as debuff characters may no longer be... Uh, a make or break set of characters for optimal formations. Uh, yeah. Gone are the days of double dipping debuffs for ultimates. Ooh, CNE says birdsong skin drop incoming. So, people who aren't paying attention to the chat, this is your audio cue. Pay attention to the chat. Here it is. I think. Get it. Claim. Get the birdsong skin while I turn mine on here. Okay, Barovian Witch birdsong. Oh my god, look at her hat! Look at her hat! It looks so good! <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I love it. That's amazing. Ding dong, birdsong skin. <laughs> hmm. Actually, that uh, reminds me of something. I, I want to uh, show off maybe a, a little, little better shot of this birdsong skin. So I'm gonna see if a, if a little trick I used to do still works. 
Okay, so I'm gonna grab Birdsong. Nope, that didn't work. I took her out. No, there she is. Ah, that doesn't work anymore. Darn, okay. I used to grab the character, open up the shop, and then just put them over the dark space under where all of your chests are, and that way there wasn't any like visual noise of the background, so I could really appreciate the art more directly. Ah, it doesn't work anymore, that's, that's unfortunate. Mm, okay. Someone posted the, the doorbell sound effect in the Discord? Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I close Discord while I'm streaming, so it doesn't distract me. But uh, but thank you. Maybe maybe I'll have that for next time. Maybe. That could be fun. That was very fun having that in the C&E stream. Mmm. <laughs> Yeah, for the people in the chat who are doing exclamation mark claim, that doesn't function. That doesn't do a thing. That's not going to do you any favors. It's just going to confuse other people. Okay. Let's start taking a look at these champions. Oh, Shepherd's Warrior, you got your first feat from a from a gold chest. Oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations. I'm a little laggy. Oh no! I'm sorry. Good now? Okay. I try to uh, close as much stuff as I can for streaming so that there isn't any issues. But uh, truth be told, I need a better PC. Spec choices. Oh, I'm, I'm, I know, I know, Jad. But um, before I take my spec choices, I'm, I want to think about what characters do I actually want to use in this formation. I want Barrel in front. He's going to be my tank, after all. I missed. Okay, barrel in front. <sighs> now. Paulton would be best here on the edge with four adjacencies. And I'm going to want to have my DPS character in the top here. Thinking about setting up Birdsong DPS because she's been on my bench for well over a year. If I'm going to set up Birdsong as my DPS, then I just don't need Artemis at all. So I'm going to take him out. Which means I can put Strix in. And... This might be like a weird 3 DPS composition that wouldn't I would not normally uh, suggest doing. But we're going to do it today. Because it's fun. And it lets us uh, show off. Um, it, it lets us show off the champions that have changes to them. Since there's multiple DPS champions. Okay. So Hitch's friendly buff has been renamed to Natural Performer, but it still functions in much the same way. However, now it also has an interaction with this new Ricochet ability, where when he attacks, he throws daggers, and they have a chance of ricocheting off of the enemies that they hit to hit another enemy or even the same enemy. Yeah, Hitch is just full support now, and the, the CVA was updated to reflect that. I took his DPS role icon off of the CVA. Okay. Kron is interesting because uh, they really changed his Thunderclap. Uh, no, it was the Shocking Grasp, that's it. Uh, the Firebolt was a, um, like rebalanced to not be as optimal, so the Shocking Grasp is at least more competitive, I suppose. I almost always take Firebolt, 
but now Shock and Grass may be better situationally. A three second stun is pretty long in Idol Champions. I, isn't that the same length as Naeli's stun on her ultimate? So that's significant. I'm wondering if we might see Krond DPS perma stun formations. Like some kind of situation developing where people start fielding multiple stun champions just to capitalize on, on Kron's stun with Shock and Grasp. And Thunderclap is still your favorite. Oh, good. I'll still take additional secrets for Paulton. Paulton hasn't been updated. Nor does he really need to be. I think I think Paulton's kind of just fine as he is right now. But this bird song placement <laughs> being incorrect is really strange to me. That's just 14,000 hours of seeing everyone in their proper place and suddenly seeing bird song jump over into slot 2.5 is jarring to say the least. I'm just going to take Artemis out of here so I'm not tempted to put him in. How do you claim the drop? Uh, it should just be a button that you click at the top of the chat. <laughs> I mean, it's it's patch day. Something always goes wrong, right? It could be far worse. Let's take Ruby Encouragement ahead and magic for Ruby Weakness, because I'm definitely... Well, I don't know, actually. I could just make Birdsong into my support here and use either Strix or Krond. So Krond is both melee and magic, so either of those would work for Regis. Well, for that matter... Yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm going to respec Regis to forward and melee. That way, we could choose between Birdsong or Krond for our DPS, depending on how we feel. I'll set up Krond for now. Krond would benefit more if I was specifically building around him, of course, if I was using people to buff his survival of the fittest, whether they're evil aligned or have a strength of 16 or higher. So it may just be that we end up going with Birdsong anyway. I'm going to put Sasaspia up closer to the front so that uh, she can actually reach Tyrell for her healing. And I'll take Spreading Spores, just because that's what I'm used to taking. Okay, time to look at some of these updates. Let's take a look at Daddy's first. I did, um... I did two Daddyus time gates, kind of in preparation for the year one part two update. I didn't know what was going to change. Like, I didn't have that insider knowledge about what was going to be changing. I was just a matter of having faith. I was like, I bet they're going to fix up Daddyus. I bet they're going to fix up Daddyus. So, yeah, I did a few Daddyus time gates to try to bring him up to speed on, on gear and item levels. Okay. So he still has his skill empowerment as like his his core buffing ability, uh, which buffs champions within two slots of him uh, if their intelligence is 14 or higher. Uh, however, he now has a new ability called Together in Magic, which further increases the power of his skill empowerment buff on champions that have magic base attacks. And if you don't know, this is how you tell. Right over here, this little icon in the top left of the base attack uh, info box on the character's sheet here, the character's like pop-up box, that's a little fireball icon. That means this is a magic attacker. This is a ranged icon, little arrow. And here's a little sword icon, so that's a melee attack. You see Krond here has both magic and melee with his war magic basic attack because he leaps out to attack with his hammer and then casts one of his cantrips as a follow-up. So, together in magic should be further buffing anyone who has that little fireball icon in their basic attack box corner in the upper left. 
Practice makes perfect increases the damage of his orbs every time he casts the same orb in a row, which is just random. But from what we saw in the dev blog, apparently they increase the chance of him casting the same orb in a row. And I think there is supposed to be an upgrade that makes us so that his practice makes perfect also affects his... Yes! Empowered Empowerment. Increase the effective skill empowerment by 200% plus 50% for each stack of Practice Makes Perfect that's active. Excellent. So now he's kind of an RNG buffer, which is interesting. It's, it's fun. So the, the more often he casts the same chromatic orb color, the stronger his buff will be. Jake Jones asks, can you respect champions mid-run? Yes, if... You use a Potion of Specialization. Click on his Potion of Specialization, and it'll bring up all of your champions who currently have specializations chosen. You can simply click the champion, click Confirm, and then you can re-choose their specialization. But I'm happy with the one I have, so I'm just going to keep going with that one. Uh, by the way, guys, there's this uh, annoying little UI glitch here that's causing item descriptions to like stay on the screen. It's annoying, but click on a blacksmith contract and then escape all the menus and that'll make it go away. That's the one thing that I've found that can just make that go away quickly and easily. So if that's just bothering you visually, you can just dismiss that by uh, not actually using a blacksmith contract. Makos is the only straight magic DPS currently. Um, is that right? I feel like that might be right. Crawl is evil, but he's melee, I think, with his basic attack. Sasaspia? Magic. Evil. There you go. Although she's not a DPS character, despite having a weird number of DPS uh, self DPS upgrades. Jim is not evil. Jim is neutral. <laughs> Bob. Yeah, we don't have a Bob champion yet. <laughs> we do have a Jim, but no Bob. Margaret. <laughs> Apparently, Margaret's an evil robot axe murderer. I think that was the. Uh, that's that's what we determined in the C and E stream. That was weird. Maybe, maybe in Slotsko, evil magic DPS. That could be cool. Okay, I want to take a look at Strix next because um, her haunted ability rework is very interesting to me. So she still has poor hygiene, causes anyone that gets too close to take extra damage. Great. She still has Death Ward, which is just a useful support ability uh, for at, at least, like, that that one crucial moment when you're fighting a boss and you, you almost got them dead, but then, like, bam, they smashed your, your tank line. Oh, no! Strix can get them back up. Well, at least one of them. Uh, and then 30 seconds later, she can do it again, but that's not enough to survive. But she has saved me in a few clutch moments in the past, back when she was uh, a newer character. Death Ward has certainly come in handy, at least a handful of times. Haunted. Increase the damage of all champions by 100% for every champion death in the formation while Strix is in it, with stacks persisting until you reset. Oh boy! This is what I call failing forward. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Uh, and I like that so much, I'm going to take Echoes of the Past uh, to just enhance that further. Uh, that's not really going to do me any favors right now, because I, I, I'm not expecting to die multiple times. But could be fun. Could be fun if I get uh, really deep into the adventure here and start having problems yes yes dave spurt yes i i am you're not slot three i'm dying to know if uh spurts 
sacrifice ultimate works with this permanent haunted bonus. I I need to know if that works because if so, Spurt and Strix are like best friends now. Oh, that'd be amazing. But I can't use Spurt right now. Spurt doesn't qualify for Strahd, so can't check that myself. But if someone else could check that, please. Yes, it certainly used to count. It, it used to trigger. I don't know if it triggers anymore. I hope it does. Because you still have to, like, wait a long time for it to come off of cooldown so that you can do it again. <laughs> Can't use anyone in slot 12 yet, either. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. All right, Birdsong is uh, bullying us for choosing her specializations. I cannot scroll away from her. She just chases me across the screen. So let's finally take a look at Birdsong. So she still has Song of Battle. Increase the damage of anyone within two steps of her. Impressive blade work. Makes her attack another target. Tempo of Battle. Whenever she hits an enemy, increase the effect of Song of Battle, her buff, by 100% for 10 seconds. Cool. Yes, yeah, so we can use Zorbu with feet. I don't remember if uh, I have the feet for Zorbu or not. But regardless, I'm not planning on using Zorbu on this run. It's too easy. Yeah, I like my challenges. Although, since I'm curious and thinking about it right now, do I have it? I do. Okay, great. So, for future reference for myself, uh, hey Mars, you have the intelligence feed on Zorbu, so have fun with Strahd variants. If you don't have that, open up some gold chests to get it. It's going to help you a lot. Okay, so we have our first specialization choice, and... Ah, uh, you know, I really want to celebrate this Barovian Witch skin because it's extremely cool. So I am just going to take Theme of Consideration... Choosing neutral champions to receive twice the benefit of her Song of Battle buff, because Birdsong herself is a neutral champion, so this will apply to herself. It's good to inspire yourself. You know, that's, that's part of self-care. Like, be an inspiration to yourself. That's a very positive thing. And here's her second set of specializations. First, let's take a look at uh, any further upgrades she picked up along the way. Tempo of Victory, whenever Birdsong gets a Killing Blow, increase the effect of her Song of Battle by X% percent for 15 seconds and stacks up to three times, with each Killing Blow resetting the timer. Her specializations are kind of how you... They're kind, they're kind of how you decide which path she goes down as far as being DPS, or support, or... Just different DPS support. Like, th this is better for bosses, crescendo. Uh, this is better for just general pushing, because it's it's better against, like, multiple mobs. Whereas a soloist is better for her, like, specifically as your DPS, I suppose. It's still very, very early. Uh, it's literally, like, day one of this, uh, this update happening. So... I'm looking forward to reading Silesa's evaluations of uh, all of the updated characters. And of course, uh, Garwar's thoughts. Stay tuned after my stream today uh, for Garwar's official stream. Ooh. <laughs> I'll be passing it off to him. So because I am thinking about setting up Birdsong as my DPS here, I will take Soloist increasing the DPS of her by 400%, and increasing the duration of her tempo of victory stacks to 60 seconds from 15 seconds. That's very nice. I hope Silas is already working on everything. Looks like I can't actually put a familiar on Birdsong either, because the game is confused about which slot she's in. Hmm. It's unfortunate. I'll just have to level her up manually, but that's okay. A 
some of you may be wondering, someone always asks me at some point, uh, what tea do I have today? Empty mug currently. I have an entire pitcher I made for today because this is such a special day. I have made one of my most special teas. This is a rose chai that I picked up from a little shop hundreds of miles away from where I live. Ah, oh, that is heavenly. This is the last of it too, so official 1.0 launch of Idol Champions, I think. Yeah, that deserves something special. Love the taste of rose. Yuki, the snowman, what is the best way of getting potions of speed? Silver chests. Just, um, like, spam silver chest purchases with your gems. Of course, you're giving up getting epic potions of speed doing so. So it kind of depends on what do you value more. I have enough epic potions of speed left. But I'm running low on medium and rare. So for me, I would rather spam uh, silver chests to get those. How did it work? Really? My, my trick for making it go away worked the first time on stream and then not the second time. Darn. Is this actually fixed? Can I just restart my game to make this stop? Or is this going to be here for the whole stream? Click a champion. Thank you. I did not know that. The blacksmithing contract trick worked every time I did it before I streamed, but... Thanks for the save, guys. Appreciate that. Oh, I, I see like, some people in chat talking about uh, very special teas as well. Very nice. Mr. Negaton, the concern for most of us Mars is that medium tier players use all their contracts and don't have enough mediums to unlock Strahd right after event. I know! I am one of those people who every single event I spam contracts. I, I use all of my bounties every single event, even if I don't like the new character, because I might come to like them in the future. I like future-proofing against my own expectations, I suppose. But I always use up all of my bounties, so I never have any stockpiled. <clears throat> I was lucky enough to be able to just barely afford unlocking straw at this time. <sighs> Lots of uh, grinding for patron chests and free play currency and such. Not much to do in the past few days, given that uh, I've finished up all of Mert and 99% of Vajra. So just back to regular farming until today now we have Strahd as a patron so now we have a uh, much more to do it's like 125 variants in the game currently so new patron added boom 125 missions to do amazing i think that was the number quoted in the discord the other day what am I missing on Vajra? Uh, I, oh my gosh. Visions of Strahd. Curse you, Strahd! Yeah. But, but... See this right here? It's plus one confit for Celeste. That's my saving grace right there. As soon as I get that plus one confit for Celeste, I'll be able to slap that on my Celeste. Throw Celeste into my formation for Vajra's Visions of Strahd, and boom! Done with it. As it is right now, I can get to the final boss. The, the stage 350 is the goalpost, uh, but I can't kill it. I can get to it, but I can't kill it. I'm so close. 
I can get it down to like half health. It's an armored boss. It's a giant evil tree monster. It's terrible. I hate it. Which is to say I love it because it's a great challenge. Uh, but as soon as I throw Celeste in there, it's it's game over. Oh! Made in Yashiro. Hello, I'm French, and I play since August 2018. Welcome. <laughs> uh, I, I've been here since um, September 2017. And I never thought I'd still be here. I didn't think I would. But I just, I fell in love with this game. It's Dungeons and Dragons. I love D&D. I love being able to see all these characters here, all my little friends running around, bopping things with their weapons or their magic, what have you. The dialogue is fun. Look sharp in almost every single adventure. <laughs> uh, the art is incredible. Uh, the music I could take a pass on. But... Like, 95% of this game is just amazing to me. Hey, W Pendragon. Thank you for subscribing to the CNE Games channel. They appreciate your support. I'm out of coffee. That's okay, I have an entire pitcher of rose chai. <sighs> Zeke. It's a big question. Uh, taking questions now, if anybody wants to uh, to, uh, to ask things. Question for you that you may or may not know. When using Artemis DPS and Birdsong as support, would it be better to spec Birdsong to evil or spec her to whatever alignment you have the most DPS champions of for Artemis to observe? Would... I, gut reaction tells me... To get, like, the most characters out. If Artemis even can observe that. Because it's not... It's not positional. It just blanket targets everyone in the formation. As long as they qualify. As long as they fit the alignment. Yeah. I guess that would be... I'll have to experiment with that. I haven't used Birdsong in so long. It's good to have her back, but boy, it's been a while. I love this skin, though. Oh, my DPS went down. That's okay. Oh, she needs levels. Chibi CD, thank you for subscribing. Glacier, question, what do you think about the impact the soft, cast, the soft cap increase will make on the game? Uh, I think the soft cap increase under any other circumstance, my general assumption would be every time the level cap increases, it's go time for pushing your highest walls trying to get your uh, highest area ever pushed up further. But we are also dealing with the ultimate uh, changes, how they will no longer double dip for debuffing. So my hope, I suppose, right now is that the two adjustments will kind of even each other out the soft cap increase would generally mean that you could go further and ultimates being nerfed some might say i think just fixed is more appropriate is going to make it so that you don't push crazy high anymore like it used to be the case that i would see my bud that's uh, base ultimate damage listed right over here. I would see my bud listed as like E150 or E160. But 
I would be capable of dealing E200 something damage because of the nature of ultimates double dipping for debuffs on enemies. So I'm betting that their intention with the level cap increase and the ultimate debuff rebalance is to try to try to cut it as even as it was prior to this update. Yeah. So I'm I'm not convinced that I'm going to be able to reach my next personal goal of stage 800 yet. Maybe with some of the Strahd feats and perks. Maybe. Speaking of which, we haven't looked at his perks. Okay. Tomb and Gloom. Simple. Memories of Mist. Okay, this is all, all damage. The globals are the most interesting to me because that, that they apply all the time, even when you don't have patrons enabled. Increase the damage of champions adjacent to tanks. Okay. So pretty much every tank loves that. Every, like, tank and DPS character, like, combo would love that. Except for if you are trying to utilize Turiel, because Turiel wants people as far away as possible. I guess you could always just put people who qualify as tanks in the back, like Grama, but not actually use them as tanks. Just use them as their support abilities, like Grama's Arctic. Increase the damage champions adjacent to healers. Hmm. Non-human champions damage buff. Increase the damage of champions intelligence 13 or higher. Huh? Interesting. So he he forces you to use only intelligence 13 plus, but he'll also buff them. Ah, that's interesting. Live dangerously. Increase the damage of unshielded champions. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Huh. Okay. 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 So that's that's like saying don't use Calliope <laughs> or anyone else that just blanket shields everybody. All right. Reduces the health of enemies. This reminds me of the Kelimvor blessing that reduces the health of undead enemies, but this is like everybody. The bidding of Strahd. Okay, and these are just global damage increases. Okay. Blood is life. <laughs> Good names. <sighs> oh yeah, none of our current shielders can actually be used here, right? Yeah, we can't use Calliope. Gillick doesn't shield. Gillick heals. Can't use Korth. Maybe we'll have a shielder that qualifies in the future. Well, I mean, Tyrrell. But Tyrrell only shields himself, and he's not a DPS character anyway. So, meh. I guess it'll matter for his ultimate. For biting. But that's probably not going to be very important. Yeah, Keelik might be your go-to healer for Strahd now. Yeah, I can't use Barrowin either. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> uh, the Strahd restrictions. Intelligence 13 or higher. Just so everyone can see. There you go. Here's the, uh, the Strahd, like, main menu. So you can see for yourself. Only changes in the intelligence score of 13 or higher can be used. Yeah, I wonder when we're getting that uh, Dwarven Archmage. I bet they'll qualify. True, Sasaspia heals. And I I'm guessing... It depends on your gear situation or what kind of formation you're trying to set up. It will depend on whether Sasaspi is better for you than Kilek. <sighs> 
Tyrrell can heal. Tyrrell can heal if you have him set to his Moonbeam specialization. But it's it's always such a weird situation for positioning him because his Moonbeam works best when he has the fewest adjacencies, but he only heals adjacent, so it can be difficult to put him in a good spot with Moonbeam if you want to take advantage of his healing. I pretty much never use him for healing. I didn't realize there was a blue dragon in this adventure. I've been trying to keep like a running list in my head of all the different colors of dragons that we've seen in the game, and I didn't realize that we had a blue. Nice. Oh, what's my wild offer? Ha! <laughs> oh, that's appropriate. Holy symbol of ravenkind. Uh, Strahd will never see us coming, right? Guys? <laughs> It's a very fitting Golden Epic Wild offer there. How much better is Deacon as a speedster now, Supple is asking. Uh, without having done any personal experimentation with the character yet, just reading over the patch notes... I can't use him right now. I, I would love to throw him out, but I, I can't use him in, in this run. Uh, hey, Gar, maybe on your stream you can pick up on the characters that I am not able to use for this stream. So that way we can kind of hit everybody. But um, my read of the patch notes for Deacon makes me feel like he's just straight up twice as good for speed now. Which is saying something because he was already very good doubling the spawn rate of enemies. Apparently, his confidence in the boss ability, which doubles the spawn rate of enemies, uh, can be increased further by 100% for taking his boss once speed spec. That's amazing. And on top of that, he has... What is it? A, is it a feat? Yeah, it's not his items. It must be a, a feat, I think. Yeah, spawn speed, not spawn rate. Thank you. Yeah, definitely misspoke there. Thank you. Spawn speed. If enemies are spawning faster, then you can progress through the game faster. Yeah, the, uh, the spec choice for his boss one speed. He now has... Mm, epic story of little kobold. Doom, doom, doom. And boss one speed. His new specialization option. He used to have two, now he has three. Choose boss one speed if you want to go faster. Ah, uh, the feat is a 40% increase. Ooh. That's very nice. I didn't think it would be that high. I have some chests saved up, and I haven't been able to do this in past uh, streams, in the past couple of streams, but I've got enough here now. We could have some fun here. What do you think? Sean, could you turn on the, the switch? Could you, could you flip the switch on for me, Sean, that controls the... The shiny drops. Okay, blues. 
Nice, but not what I'm hunting for. A lot of blues. Okay, also very nice, but not what I'm hunting for. Come on. Okay, large speed. I do need large speed. And... I guess it's not happening today, guys. Oh, well. I believe in the spring extravaganza as well. <laughs> ah, that's okay. Oh, there's an epic for Zaka. Woo! You know, yesterday I actually picked up... Where is it? Here's my crawl. Yesterday, I picked up... Ah, uh, nope, was it not that one? I already had that one. No, no, it wasn't it wasn't a feat, it was an epic. That's right. That's right. It was this. This. I posted it on the Discord. From a Mert chest. Wait, was it yesterday or was it this morning? The days all kind of blend together right now, given what's going on in the world. What's the drop rate for feats in gold chests? 1 in 25, I believe. Can anyone confirm for me? I believe it's 1 in 25. How many hours do I have in the game? According to Steam, just over 14,000. But I also have multiple accounts. This is just my main account. I'd say across all of my other accounts combined, it's probably another 1,000. So maybe 15,000 total. Oh, Bunny the Bunny! You got a plus one dex feat for Archon <laughs> from my chest today. Very cool. Okay. I love hearing what you guys get from my chests. Can you find a feat in a chest that you've already found? No. Once you have a feat, you have it. It is removed from the pool of feats that you can find, as far as I'm aware. I have never heard of anyone getting a duplicate feat. Uh, <laughs> I suppose you could call me an expert. 50 gold chest and got three feats. Oh, wow. Nice. That's some good luck. It is, of course, RNG. There's no pity timer for feats, so... It's all up to uh, random chance. Where do you find the daily challenges? Um, there's weekly challenges if you have patrons. If you have a patron unlocked, you can go to the challenges tab for the patron and it'll show you your weekly challenges to fulfill. These reset Mondays at noon Pacific. Oh, thank you, Zeke. Cheers. Thanks for being here. Have a good time. Whatever you are going off to go do. What exactly is the extravaganza mission that you're trying to complete right now? Ah, this is the spring extravaganza. This is not a mission. Uh, this is a celebration, like a meta super event sort of thing going on. We have these occasionally. Uh, once or twice a year, we have these sort of... Um, check in daily to get free stuff events that occur currently it is uh the spring extravaganza this is day one of it celebrating the official version 1.0 launch of idol champions congrats again to the team behind it and for having me along for the ride it's been a blast you can get a spring chest each day which comes with all sorts of awesome stuff. Like today, it gave me a time gate piece. Um, I think a, an epic potion and an epic bounty contract. Something like that. It was a lot. Uh, and there's going to be seven days of that. And if you get four of these out of seven, 
You can get more, of course, but if you get at least four of these out of seven, any four, you'll also get a bonus reward of five additional gold chests, a plus one constitution feat for Celeste. Trust me, you want this. <laughs> do not do not think that's just some some silly feat that you'll never use. You will. You will use this. And the champion Minsk skin as well. That's another reward bonus. I'm coming for that skin. You better believe I'll be using that next week. You'll use it once. That's still using it! <laughs> I will use it once. And be very grateful for the opportunity to use it. Plus, there may be uh, further Vajra variants in the future that are, like, impossible to do without that feat. Ah, uh, boo skin for life. The boo skin is exceptional. It's very nice. My favorite detail here is that the <laughs> the boo skin for Minsk includes a Minsk skin for boo. You probably can't see that with a very small detail of the, the screen for the stream right now, but um, uh, Minsk's pet giant miniature space hamster, Boo, sitting on his shoulder, has like a purple body paint on him in the style that Minsk usually does. So it's like they've swapped costumes. It's hilarious. I love it. It's a great little detail on that. But I, I am itching to use a full champion skin team. Champion Brunor. Uh, not you. Oh, you. Champion Naeli. Champion Stokey, etc., etc. There's Champion Calliope, Champion Makos, Champion Tyrell, uh, and some others. But now we're going to have Champion Minsk. Ah! Champion Ashara, that's another one. I think we can do a full champion skin team. I think. Uh, and Dritzt also. There you are. Champion Dritzt, which you can get from the patron shop. Uh, Glowy, Dritzt is a companion of the hall. All of the characters in the game are champions. Dritzt is a companion of the hall. That's his affiliation. Not every character has an affiliation, but many of them do. Uh, and then there are a special set of skins for certain characters, the champion skins, which are kind of like having that character wearing their epic gear. That would be my estimation of what the champion skins are supposed to be. Like if you take a look at their epic gear, figure in wondrous power, press play little champion, and then you look at the art, it looks to me like that matches up pretty closely. Not exactly, but pretty close. Is it drop time? I don't see it yet. But I'll say it as soon as I see it. Get some free stuff! That's what you're here for, right? I'm on to you. I know what you're really here for. <laughs> there it is! Get your stuff! I didn't actually have that one yet. Fantastic. It's up. Click the thing. It worked for me. I I wish it worked for everybody. I'm sorry. I have no power over that. I wish I did. But if it does work for you, get the thing. Get it. Claim it. It's up there right now. Get it. Get it. Get it. That was not a repeat for me. Can I spoil the shop? The new patron, Yuki the Snowman. Absolutely. Happy to do so. Showed it off earlier, but for anyone who wasn't here at the time, here is Strahd von Zerovich's patron shop. We have the Strahd starter pack, okay. Strahd patron chest costs the same amount of patron currency as the others do for their chest. Vampire caddy Bree skin. Here's what this pack looks like. $10 pack. Gives you caddy Bree if you don't have her. Vampire caddy Bree skin, which might be one of my all-time favorite skins in the game as of right now. It looks amazing. Seven gold Cadbury chest, 2,000 Barovian coins, that's Strahd's currency. Another time gate piece, so we can now get three time gate pieces from patrons overall. Which means, considering the five to six day cooldown for time gate pieces dropping uh, naturally, that means we can get, like, basically four per week playing the game, which is incredible. Because you only need six to open time gate. Special specialization, 
Huge potions, of course. But uh, here's, the, here's the good stuff. Rare feat, Charmed Life, Lucky, plus 40% for Paulton. Potion of Polish, just like the others. Already got mine for the other two, so this is a new shiny for me to get. Keen Mind Feet for Grama, plus one intelligence. I think that means that you'll be able to use Grama for Strahd variants once you pick up this feat. And Vistani Skin for Regis. Not as good, but I'm still going to use it, because I just love collecting all the skins. Uh, excess Dagger Storage Feet for Hitch, increasing his number of daggers thrown by one. Full Moon Epic Feet for Tyrrell, 80% increase to his Moonbeam, which is big. And Toy Werewolf Familiar. There's also been a familiar added to Vajra, the Conjured Spider, and a Golden Flame Skull familiar added to Merch Shop. There you go. Show the perks again? Yeah, sure. Just real quick. I've already talked through these, so I'm just going to slowly scroll through so you can see them. And of course, you can always go back and check the recording later after uh, this episode gets posted up on somewhere, Twitch or YouTube or what have you. Oh, uh, my visual aids, the, the champion visual aid went up earlier before the stream, but uh, I have not yet put out the update to the patrons visual aid. I'm going to put out an update for that so that you can see like who all qualifies for Strahd, and uh, I'll see about including um, whether feats apply or not. Like some way of visually distinguishing which characters apply via feats versus not. I think... I think without considering feats, it's currently 27 champions across 11 slots for Strahd. And with feats, I think it's 32 across 12 slots. I think that's it. No, Gar! Oh my god, no! That is far too much work! No! You update your own stuff, bud. <laughs> Ugh. Although... Updating text guides, I mean, that's easier. That's just text. That's 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 nothing. Step it up, Gar. Get on my level of visual aids. Come on. <laughs> no, you know I'm kidding, Gar. I use Gar Wars guys just like everybody else. Oh, I'm sorry, Vasaru. <laughs> That you missed uh that you missed the claim. I'm so sorry. Talahamut, uh any idea why Mars characters show less than int twelve, but mine just has a white bird icon? No, that's interesting. Huh. Maybe they changed the icon between update somehow <laughs> hmm. are you playing on a different platform i'm playing on steam what platform are you playing on oh it's just because of the the variant that i'm on right yeah because i'm i'm on intelligence hunt which i thought would be a, a fun little tongue-in-cheek variant to do for strahd because it is the exact same variant restriction as the strahd restriction itself <laughs> so this is practically a gimme. If you've already been able to complete this normally, then there's no reason you shouldn't be able to complete this on the Strahd version of it. It's just a higher objective. No further um, restriction to your champions for Intelligence Hunt. And there's one of these over in Tomb of Annihilation as well. I think if we pop over there to Tomb of Annihilation... Second map. I think it's... Is it this camp? No. Is it this one? Yes. Think your way out of it. Only champions with an intelligence score of 13 or higher can be used. Great. <laughs> so, exact same situation for that particular variant over in Tomb of Annihilation. 
this might be my recommendation if you're like a newish to medium player and you're kind of like unsure about how you feel doing Strahd variants. If you have those variants unlocked in Grand Tour and Tomb of Annihilation respectively, maybe just jump into one of those just to kind of test the waters and see how you feel with doing a Strahd formation. I think this is fine, personally. Uh, I think I've got an okay formation here. I shouldn't be doing double DPS because that's not really how the game's designed to work. Really. I mean, it can, but optimally. Like, if you, if you care about optimization, then you should almost always be going with single DPS. Whereas I'm, I'm kind of doing both Krond and Birdsong here. Wouldn't it be impossible to be a new player and have access to the Strahd variants? Yeah, I guess um, it really depends on how we're defining new. Maybe we should have some kind of terminology <laughs> for, um, I don't know. How do we how do we really quantify levels of experience? Yes, I could set up Birdsong as support, but I just, I just want to use Birdsong as DPS. That's the thing. There's playing optimally for numbers... And playing optimally for fun. Right now I'm playing optimally for fun. Okay, that's a very good point, uh, Bunny the Bunny. New is definitely less than 40 champions. Yep. And towering expectations completed. Yeah. I suppose you could always, like, you could just buy your way to having that many champions. But it's still an amount of time that you'd have to invest to get up through towering expectations. So, yeah, anyone who has Strahd unlocked, I probably wouldn't bill as, um, as a new player. Yeah, we're about to reach the previous soft cap for levels in the game, which is uh, about the E56 range. So I suppose we're pushing on past that to uh, the new target, which is like E63, 62, 63. I love Farida. Uh, Farida... I don't think Farida has ever really been one of the top DPS characters. But just conceptually, like just her design, I don't know, her, her art, she is easily one of my favorites. I invested a lot into Frida. It's almost like every stream I talk about that, it just comes up in the chat somewhere. Uh, Evil Spoons, yes, uh, we've been able to set familiars on upgrading champions for a while now. At least several months. I'm okay with not leveling up click damage right now, actually. Uh, I, it's not my intention to, to blitz through this variant as fast as possible. Uh, I actually want to focus on showing off the new stuff like Birdsong with her new skin and her new mechanics. Krond with uh, his shocking grasp <laughs> stun. Um, as well as chatting with you guys, answering questions, just sharing the moment, sharing the excitement. <sighs> Nightmare. No, if 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 I was a patron, that would not be that would not be my restriction. <laughs> I think my favorite thing that I've seen so far is um, uh, if Mars for a patron to have like a random assortment of champions every week, not just random challenges, but you just get random champions assigned to you and you have to work with those. Have I thought of using Barrowin? I can't. 
Can't use her. And honestly, even if I had, like, intelligence feet for Barrowin or something. Like, even if I could use Barrowin for this, I wouldn't want to. Because Tyrell's, like, my only tank option. I could throw Dragon Bait in here, but Tyrell's much better for a tank. Dragon Bait's still fine, but uh, Tyrell's much better. You must play while drinking tea. <laughs> what are the new buffs you get with soft cap increase? I don't know yet. I haven't gotten there yet. This is my my first deep run since uh, the patch came out. It's day one of the, of the update after all. So I will be far more confident talking about um, all the increases next week. But uh, perhaps Garwar can uh, go into more detail on his stream coming up after mine in a little over half an hour from now. What's the latest tea? I have, ugh. I've made an entire pitcher of rose chai. I love chai. The spicier, the better. It's one of my most special teas. And it's the last of it that I have. I brewed it specifically for today as a part of my own way of celebrating alongside uh, CNE and the Idol Champions community. Delicious. Cheers, everyone. I need to pour myself another mug. Another cup of it. Is chai spicy? <laughs> Good chai is spicy. Yeah, that's right, Cini. I was I was specifically saving the last of this uh, for this. Like I, I thought about this days ago. Like, oh man, for my my stream for launch day, I could make my my last of my rose chai. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> so I've been waiting for this for days, looking forward to it. I love this tea. Yes, chai tea is TT. It's like ATM machine. Mm. Uh, there was a there was a question in chat somewhere. Uh, Mordenid, which mission do you suggest to kill constructs faster? I just go Mad Wizard because you can do constructs, you can do fiends, you can do fey, you can do humanoids, you can do beasts. You can pretty much do everything except undead uh, in Mad Wizard, so I just go there. So, oh, you know, we have something else to talk about, which is formation saves. But um, I have a question for you, chat. c &E stream is excellent, and I love it. And they always take questions, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. But I'm going to flip this around on all of you. Here on my stream, I'm going to ask you. Out of everything in the Spring Extravaganza, which, to go over again, ahem. <clears throat> There's the Spring Extravaganza of Rewards itself, number one. Uh, formation saves. Uh, the Champion Balance update. So Deacon, Ishii, Daddyus, Kron, Hitch, Birdsong, Bear, and Strix, and all the stuff that happened to Ultimates. Uh, and the level cap increase. There's the Strahd Patron. There's the new Familiars, the new Skins, the new DLC. What are you most excited about? That's my question for you this week. I want to hear from you in the chat. If you love Idle Champions, if you've been looking forward to the version 1.0 launch, this is a big day, maybe the biggest day in the history of the game and the community. What are you most excited about out of all the stuff I just listed? Yeah, that got people talking. <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, even Margaret chimed in with Strahd. <laughs> Excellent. Everything's amazing. Calm down, CNE. I know, I agree. <laughs> Woo! 
a lot of people coming in here. I'm seeing um, formation saves. I'm seeing people call out specific things for, like, the speed increase for uh, Deacon, Birdsong buffs. That, that's interesting. A lot of people saying Strahd, new patrons, Strahd. Cool. Cool. Yeah, c &E, you guys knocked it out of the park with this. I, I, can, I can feel the energy in the room, you know? So many people just being psyched about all of this. Huh, Trontanian. Uh, Mars, I'm going to go off the board and say the sale. I got three more familiars and I'm up to six now. Nice! That's a magic number. You can put uh, six on the field for clicking distractions, or you can put five on the field for doing everything but clicking distractions, and one over on click level itself. It's a very good combination. I think it's the only person I've seen say the sale. So, uh, cool. <laughs> But, um, honestly, I have to agree with everyone. I mean, I'm, I love this game. I'm passionate about it. I'm, I'm, you might say I'm the hype guy. <laughs> so, I am stoked for everything on the list. You did go with six on the field? Very good. It's the easiest way to get, um, the click distractions challenges whenever those pop up for patrons. <sighs> yeah, uh, Evashu, I think, really hit it on the nail here. If you have to nerf debuffs, combining it with a buff to so many old characters, and I'll just chime in here with addendum, also level cap increase, is a very good choice. Yes, I agree. I think that's going to maybe salve a lot of wounds that some players might feel over uh, the angst of debuff champions getting hit with the hammer a little bit. The fact that we got power-ups in other places is very exciting to mitigate that loss. And But I'm wondering... Like, what's going to be more so? I feel like for me, just speaking as just myself as a longtime player, my prediction is my initial gains are going to take a hit from the ultimate change for double dipping debuffs. And then once I've picked up all my Strahd perks, I think I'll be past what my wall was previously. Like, in addition to the level cap increase. Like, I think those two things combined is going to end up with me getting past stage 800, finally. That's my goal right now. We have half an hour left in the stream. If anyone wants to talk about anything in particular... I'm going to talk about formation saves right now while I wait for questions to pop up in the chat. So you might notice that um, this over here looks a little different. I, of course, I don't have any save data because this is my first draw variant I've ever done. Uh, first of all, they've moved the level up button, the upgrade button. It's over here now. Still functions exactly the same as it did before, but it's been moved so that they can make room for this little folder icon. Let's click on that. If I had any saved formations, they would be showing up here. So let's just, let's just save this one. I'm probably not gonna keep this formation. But, uh, well, you know what? I might. Let me think about this. Uh, spring extravaganza. Stream team. Oh, that doesn't fit. Okay. Spring extravaganza team. Exclamation mark. Yay. And now I'm going to save it. Now when I open my folder, I can see it here. And I'm going to save it to slot one. This is now favorited in my slot one. And I can replace that at any time. Yeah, I might, I might just keep this word painter. I, I might just keep this one forever, just so I can remember, like, oh, yeah, that was the good day when uh, the launch happened and I was on the front page of Twitch and blah, blah, blah. 
Extravaganza. Did I not actually have it right? <laughs> oh, you're right. I, I missed an A there. Oh, no. That was very wrong. <laughs> I was too excited. Okay. There we go. Curse you, excitement. Mars sliding ham. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, what's ten times infinity? Um, ten infinities. Seriously, when do we get year one? Year two, part one. Uh, and what do you want to see for free to changes? Oh, ah, ah. I want to see a special mechanic with Havilar come into play. Like, if you have Frida and Havilar out, I want uh, them both to be, like, super buffed. Uh, US, uh, us Avatar, could you please explain exactly what double dipping debuffs means? Uh, if you'd like, but I don't really need to anymore. It is, as of now, a thing of the past. Um, basically, you, you used to be able to apply debuffs to enemies and then hit those enemies that are debuffed to deal more damage than normal, and you'd have a little damage spike that way, and that would increase your bud. And then ultimates that you use, they use your bud to decide what their damage is, but your ultimates that, like, attack things to do damage would then also take into account the debuff that's on the enemies and thus double dipping the debuffs. Uh, so, not a thing anymore. I'm going to scroll up to see uh, what questions popped up after I asked for them. What advice do you wish you'd been given as a new player? Dozy Lion, that's, that's a very good question. Oh my gosh. Um, what advice do I wish I'd been given when I was new? Focus on events. When I was uh, very new, I started just a week before the very, very, very first event happened. So it's not like anyone could have given me the advice anyway. But um, I managed to unlock the event character, Stoki, but I did not complete all of her objectives. And I had to wait a year before I could do it. That wasn't great. So do everything you can in an event while it's available. That would probably be my, my first piece of advice that I wish I had had. Uh, Ildacene asks, Mars, since Debo's been king for so long, do you think that going for buffs and higher total you'd be able to be top or meta with the changes? I don't know! And that's the fun thing, right? Like, we're in we're in that time of change, of discovery again, and it's, it's been a while. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what comes out of this. I could make predictions. But I expect that I would be wrong. And I like that. It's fun. Oh gosh. Lot of uh, chat to catch up on. Yeah, do, don't skip your event character unlocks. And oh my gosh, join the Discord. I, I'm actually going to scratch what I just said about um, focusing on events being the number one piece of advice that I wish I had had. The number one piece of advice that I wish I had had when I started was community awareness. That there is an Idol Champions community. There are streams. Hello, I'm Mars. There is the Discord. There is the Reddit. There's even the Steam discussion forums if you're into that kind of thing. I'm not. <laughs> no hate to the Steam discussion people out there. But um, join the community. Talk to us. We're friendly. We'll help you. We've got so many different places for you to ask for advice or just chat, honestly. And it's it's really, most of the time, wholesome and uplifting and just fun. So, yeah. There's even an in-game chat. Yeah, you could click on this button. I'm not going to do it live on the stream in case somebody says some bad stuff, but there is an in-game chat you can click on as well. There's all kinds of avenues for community engagement. Pick one and enjoy. Join us. 
that's probably my biggest thing. Yeah, C and E, that's, I feel like this is your biggest tool, your biggest weapon for idol champions, like as, um, I don't know, as an experience overall, as a life experience. It's just your community. You've invested in building up this community, and it's, I'm sure, in many ways paid off. Yes, there is the chat in game. I did mention that. So it's a little speech bubble here. Sometimes I jump in there to say hello. I've checked out a few other game discords just to see how they compare to Idol Champions. And I don't want to name names because I don't want to like I don't want to start any beef with <laughs> particular game communities. But I've checked out a few others, and nothing compares. Idol Champions community is the best community. Have I gotten the chest that I claimed a while ago? No. Okay. Oh, maybe it did actually go through back before I opened up like those hundreds of chests on the stream. I don't think I've ever actually bothered looking into the Minecraft community. I just play the game. It's fun. I actually made a, a skin for Mars, my avatar that I use for the Idol Champions community. So I've been playing a lot of Minecraft lately, and it's been really nice. But right now we're here for Idol Champions, so we'll focus on that. At first, I was concerned when... Um... <laughs> At first, I was concerned when the formation saves update uh, rolled out onto the onto the dev blog and it said like 50 formation saves and i thought oh man that's awesome wait surely they can't mean 50 per campaign slash patron oh no does that mean 50 total across the entire game oh no because that wouldn't be enough but then it actually is it's like it's 50 slots each that's that's wild <laughs> That's, that's amazing. I don't think I'm ever going to use that many. Even, even if I take into account patron stuff, like, here's my no healers team. Here's my, uh, no tanks team. Here's my all DPS team. And just, just doing those for every patron, for every campaign, I think even then, I'm, I'm never going to use them all. I'm never going to use all the slots. So, <laughs> I I don't ever want to see anyone else complaining that we don't have enough formation save slots ever again. <laughs> I won't. Not without very good reason to. It is... It's a ridiculous number of save slots. Cheers for that, C and E. Oh gosh, and the naming feature. Honestly, even more than the number of slots itself, I think just the fact that we can name them might be my favorite part of that aspect of the update. Now, I, I'll never have to look at my formations and think like, what was this supposed to be? What the heck was I doing with this for? Why do I have this saved? Now I'll know. I can just name it. Like, oh, this is a Zaka farm. Okay. This is Companions of the Hall, no healers. Mert. Cool. Great. Easy. My favorite weekly patron challenge. <laughs> it's not no supports for a thousand areas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, my favorite patron challenge. Hmm. Um, it actually might be the purchase something from the patron shop challenge. Because then it's like you're getting something on discount. Like, 
give me this chest. Okay, here's like a thousand currency. Oh, thanks. Discount. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's nice whenever I see that one show up in the weekly uh, challenges list. Because then I think, oh, cool, I get a chest for cheap this week. Nice. Great. Oh, what is my least favorite? Um, yeah. Thousand areas, no support. Just because, like, that's a slog. It's not that I dislike playing through without supports. I think that's a fun challenge, but doing it for a thousand areas? Oh, that's a bit much. Drop, 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 claim, claim, claim. Get your free stuff. Here's your audio cue, anyone who's listening. Come in in the chat, get your free stuff. Click the button. I think C&E for the heads up. Extended timer. Oh, nice. <laughs> Ding dong. Drop time. Hey, look, it's my new boss. Okay, bye, Strahd. <laughs> we were talking in the Discord about how uh, kind of odd it is. Um, Strahd Von Zarevic has an, an interesting hiring process. He won't let you work for him until you clear the Towering Expectations adventure. The story of which is that you are crashing his wedding. So, <laughs> you show up, ruin his wedding day, and instead of getting mad at you, he hires you to work for him. It's interesting. Uh, Jerbear, each of them are a once-only claim. I believe it's once-only except for the basic gold chests, which I think there's two of those. But everything else is once each. But you have, like, multiple chances for these things. And if you've missed out on any of your chances on the CD stream or on my stream, you might have more luck. Next stream, Garwar will be taking over for me in 15 minutes, so stay tuned for his stream. Okay, thanks, Peter. I was hoping that I had that right. <laughs> I don't want to spread misinformation. Yeah, uh, the, the limitation on, on the timer I know is upsetting for some people, but it's a good thing at least that I, the chances are multiplied. Like, you're having multiple chances throughout the day, like seven hours of, of streams to pick up this free stuff. Good luck, everyone out there. I hope we put on entertaining enough shows for you to uh, stay tuned in. I like having you here. Thank you for joining me on Mars Guiding Hand. Let's see. Does Charlax have an increase in his gold find in the new levels? Uh, Barry Strong, I think people were talking in the Well of Spoilers about that last night, and I think they said no. But I haven't uh, looked at that myself yet. I'm only just now getting past the previous level cap. So, it's all unfamiliar territory for me. We're learning together, how cool is that? Champion balance updates are the, the best days. The best update days. I love getting new content in the game. I, I really do. But it's like... The stuff that people talk about most of the time in the community are just formation strategy. Who is better to use over others in different situations? And champion balance update patches, this is when everything changes. So this is when we get like some of the best discussion really sinking our teeth into uh, into the the meat of the game and learning things together. Don't be surprised if um, we get a different top DPS character now that things have shifted. We don't know yet. It could be that uh, Zorbu's upgrades 
in the new level cap increase are mm, less than ideal. Whereas other characters who might have been close to Zorbu in the past, but not quite enough to get past him, maybe they've gotten even more TPS upgrades than him. Enough so that they push past Zorbu's place in the ladder. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I hope so. Zorbu's had his time to shine. It's time to step down, Zorbu. Well, I'm using Daddy as a support right now, and he's doing fine for now. I mean, I don't suspect that we'll have any issues. My click damage on its own would be enough to get me to, like, 280, I think, for Torm. I'm working with 4.82 E35 Torm's favor. So I can clear up to about 285 on just click damage. So I'm not really at the point yet. But I very much look forward to uh, the coming weeks when I'm sure we'll be discussing formation strategy more in depth, uh, as well as um, whatever new content is coming. Green Grass, I believe, is our next event coming next week with the return of uh, Narak, Ayla, and someone else. Hmm. I think that's our next event. Is that right? I should know this. I was just working on the CVA earlier. Oh, is there another drop happening? Or is it, are you talking about the one that just happened? Do I have an optimal Torm formation? Ha! Um, thank you for asking, Shadows Assassin. Yes and no. I believe I had an optimal Torm formation until today. But now that there's been the champion balance update for year one, part two as well as a soft cap level increase, things might be up in the air. I cannot say with confidence that my previous optimal formation is still exactly that. I may have a better combination of champions to use, and I don't know until I experiment with it. Like Even us veterans have to experiment with things. It's the most fun part of the game. Join the community and talk to us as we all work on figuring this out together. It's an exciting time, especially for the official launch of the game. I can't believe I actually get to talk about that now. Look at that, it's, it says game version 1.0 on the screen. Ah! It's amazing. I didn't think that uh, this would happen so soon. Supply, how do you go about experimenting? Oh, I, um, I get to my soft cap. Like, I just, I use a formation that gets me up to the point that I can level up everybody to their soft cap. Uh, and then I literally just drag and drop different characters in and rearrange them in different slots, use all my specialization potions to change their specializations around, and I, I just mix it up. I just mix stuff up. Figure out different things. There are tools and resources you can refer to as well. There's a very popular spreadsheet created by a uh, prominent community member, Ridge, that you can use for theory crafting your formations. Uh, it might be uh, a little confusing to set it up for yourself. I know it confused me very much when I first started doing it. It's fine now, but um, yeah, the, the Ridge sheet is a, a popular tool if you want to like optimize stuff. How to play in the drops, it's uh, supposed to just be a button that shows up on your Twitch chat at the top. Strahd runs feel so slow. Uh, this one does, for sure. I'm not using any speed champions, but that's because I want to focus on you guys and uh, the new stuff that got added. I could always put speed potions on. I'm just not feeling it right now. Uh, if you've missed any of the drops, we still have um, a couple minutes left in today's stream. I don't know if we're going to have any more drops in my stream right now. 
But picking up right after me in this relay race of idle champions marathoning streams all day long, I will be passing the baton off to uh, Superstar Garawar, as the pop-up always says in the game, <laughs> so that he can take over for me. And you'll have more chances for all of your drops to be claimed for another two hours. Is that right, Garwar? If you're here? It's gonna be a two hour stream, is that right? And I'll be there if you guys wanna keep hanging out with me after my stream today. I'll be over in Garwar's chat. So just stay tuned, stay right here. I'm gonna be going in three minutes. So if we have any more like last minute questions or um, anything anyone wants to talk about. Two hour stream too, thanks Eric. Uh, and if not, then... Um... Oh, Cassius, Mars, which skins can you not change out of? You can change out of every skin. But I don't want to. <laughs> I'm a sucker for skins. I, I love alternate costumes. I blame my um, upbringing on the Tales of series by Namco Bandai, uh, where I just feverishly collected every alternate outfit I could possibly find. I love those games to death. So uh, I also do the same in Idol Champions. I love it. I love alternate outfits. Yeah, if the art wasn't just so good in this game. <laughs> I'm aggressively grateful for the incredible art. <laughs> How dare you, Adam and Alexis and Kat and so forth. You're all incredible. What advice do you have for experimenting if you cannot reach the soft cap? Hey! It's a great question. Uh, venison. Bacon bits. <laughs> Fun name. Um, go as high as you can. And then move people around. And see if you can't push further. I know that sounds very basic. But it's kind of true. Like going back to how it, it was for me. Learning the game. I would just go as far as I could. And then desperately move people around until I like eked out just a little bit more but honestly get on the discord post your formation in the formations discussion channel and talk to us we'll be happy to help you figure stuff out together that's a uh, discord.gg slash idle champions join us there's also the reddit of course I'll be a TimeGate mega thread this weekend, as usual. Uh, I'm going to be leaving soon, but um, right before I go, uh, let me say thank you for joining me for this episode of Mars Guiding Hand, episode 11, season 2, episode 1. I'm not sure how to actually refer to it. <clears throat> I hope to see you all next time, next week, as we get into green grass. Wherever you are on Earth, Toral, or anywhere else in the multiverse, stay safe. We'll uh, weather this trial together, one day at a time. A very happy launch day to Idle Champions, to Codename Entertainment, and to all of you out there. Enjoy your spring extravaganza. I'll see you over on Garwar's stream coming up right after mine. So, until then, look sharp. Bum. Ding dong, I'm done. <laughs>